working on my 2003 Ford F-150 with a 4.6 liter. Gonna show you how to replace the oil filter housing gasket. All right, so as you can see, I already got some oil drips here on the ground just from parking this after a few minutes here. But you can see right there at the oil filter housing, you can see all that fresh oil. So I believe that uh, oil filter housing gasket's bad. Uh, this is a known issue on these 4.6 and 5.4 liters. Uh, just over time, it starts to go bad. And uh, this here has over 170,000 on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace that really quick. So go ahead and pop your hood first. So with your hood popped, um, to do this job, we will need to drain the cooling system. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. So go ahead and remove your coolant reservoir cap here. So come over here to the uh, passenger side fender well here. And if you look up, you'll see the radiator drain petcock right there. So get yourself a drain pan. And then uh, you can put a 3 8 hose on here if you want. That'll help it flow a little better into your pan. So kind of just like that. And then uh, grab a 19 millimeter or a 3 quarter. And you can loosen up this uh, drain here. Just break it free and then you should be able to unscrew it by hand. So kind of like that, go ahead and let that drain. Um, I'm not gonna reuse this coolant because this is uh, probably about five years old, so it needs to be replaced anyways. So while that's draining, uh, let's go ahead and uh, drain the oil as well. So go ahead and pull off your oil fill cap here. Crawl underneath the passenger side here. Locate your oil pan right there. Let's go ahead and remove that uh, drain plug. It's gonna be a 16 millimeter. We'll go ahead and let that oil drain. And then go ahead and slide your pan up to where it's still dripping into the uh, oil drip pan there. And uh, let's go ahead and remove the uh, oil filter. It's about like that. And there's that little shield right there that catches it. So go ahead and remove this. And pull that out of there. So now we'll go ahead and remove that sensor there on the uh, oil filter housing. So I'm just going to take a screwdriver. See if I can get up under here. And push on these tabs right here. Just push on those. And then as you push on those... Try to get your other hand up in here to uh, unplug it. It's kind of a tight fit in here. So if you can pull on the cord kind of. So just pry up and then pull out. You can see that starts to unplug. So just unplug it like that. Kind of get it up out of the way here. Next, go ahead and grab a uh, 21 millimeter. And let's see if we can get that sensor out of there. Let me zoom in here. Just grab an open end wrench here. And then just see if you can get on that and unscrew that sensor there. It's kind of like that. 
shouldn't be on there too tight. Once you get it loose, you should be able to unscrew it by hand. There's what that looks like. And then once your oil's done draining, we can go ahead and put our uh, drain plug back in. And I actually got a new drain plug that I'm gonna be using. So we'll go ahead and stick that in there. And go ahead and tighten that up. And just wipe that down. And then you can see our coolant's down to just a drip. So let's go ahead and close that up. So just tighten that. Take your 19 millimeter and you can just give that a little turn there. You don't want to over tighten that. It's about like that. And take off your 3 8 hose here. Now you can go ahead and replace your Degas bottle cap here, just so nothing falls down in there. And now I'm gonna remove the uh, air filter housing here because we need to remove the uh, lower radiator hose that goes into the oil filter housing there. And if I remove this, this will just give us better access here. So grab an eight millimeter. Let's go ahead and re loosen up this hose clamp here. And then go ahead and flip this up. Open this a little bit here. Break that free. Just pull this off of here like that. And then you can pull this air filter with the housing this should just pop out of here, so lift up. It's supposed to. Let's pull this air filter out first. So just lift up right here, and it should just pop out of here. That slides right out of there. And you can see there's our lower radiator hose going into the radiator, and then it goes right into the oil filter housing there. So now we got room to uh, pull that clamp and then we can pull that hose off. So now I'm gonna take a pair of vice grips, try to squeeze on this hose clamp here and then hopefully pull this hose off of the oil filter housing here. And then watch this power steering hose, it kind of gets in your way so you may need to move it. And make sure you got a drain pan under there. Let's try the vice grips first. See if we can get up on it here. It's kind of like that. Try to squeeze that together. Once that locks, your clamp should be loose. And let's see if we can pull this hose off of here. Kind of like that. Just let that drip down there. Just like that. 
So next, come back down below here, and we can start removing the oil filter housing bolts. There's going to be a total of four. And if you look right where we unplugged that sensor, that's why we had to pull that sensor out, is uh, to access that 13 millimeter bolt right there. So let's go ahead and uh, pull that one out there. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here, but it's kind of hard to get your hands up in here. So go ahead and break that free. And then once it's kind of broken free, it feels like I can just get it out by hand here. So there's what that looks like. And then if you take a look through the uh, driver's side fender well here, you can see the other 13 millimeter bolt's gonna be right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that one out from underneath. It's kind of hard to get the camera in there. And then I'll show you the other two bolts. I just want to show you guys so what I use to get that one out is a bunch of long extensions and then I just go up right underneath here in front of the CV axle and you can see you got good access right there okay guys so I'm not sure how well you're gonna see this uh, it's really hard to get the camera up here but you got two more and you can see where the one I just pulled out on that uh, little elbow coming out so just uh, next to that, towards the front of the uh, vehicle, you can see the two other 13 millimeters that we need to pull out. So let me go ahead and do that really quick. And so you should be able to just get those other two same way as you got the other one here, with your long extensions. Sure you got the grip pan under here that'll start spilling once you get these loose so with that broken free now let's see if we can get it out not sure if i can get it out this way Let me get these bolts out of here so I don't lose them. And it looks like that wiring harness is attached to it, but uh, let me grab and see if I can break that free. So then take you a trim tool or something. Let's see if we can pop this off of here. Should be just clipped in there. There we go. And then let's see if we can get this out of here. I'm not sure what's the best way. Let's go ahead and remove that gasket. You can see it right there. 
So go ahead and pull that off. All right, so let's look at our uh, old gasket here. And as you can see, um, of course, this will sit on here like this. So just like that. And then you got your two oil ports here and then your coolant. But over time, you can see the gasket along here. There's supposed to be a ridge. You can see how it's just flat. There's nothing left of it. Um, that's what makes it start to leak there. And uh, so this is going to be the new one. It's going to be the Felpro 70801. I got this off Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. And you can see it's for the 4.6 and the 5.4 liter, 97 to 03. Pull it out of here and you can see, see on that one, you can see the ridges where the uh, gasket is on both sides as opposed to the uh, old one here. So that's why we're replacing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this uh, oil filter housing here real quick, just with some brake cleaner or uh, some parts cleaner here, and then I'll come back. All right, so I got this all cleaned up. Um, I actually ended up using a die grinder, just uh, cleaned up some of the remnants of the uh, old gasket that was on there. So clean this up a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that. Once I get this all back on there, I'll cover this in some degreaser and uh, use a pressure washer on it to get all that uh, old oil off of there, so. And then also, it's hard, kind of hard for you guys to see, but I got that all cleaned up as well. Uh, just used some brake clean and then uh, wiped it with some paper towels there as well. So then let's go ahead and get this stuck up in here and then we'll get our gasket in between after we get it positioned correctly. Get the sensor out of the way. And get this up in here. So get it up in there kind of like that. So with your housing pretty much up in there, go ahead and take your new gasket and uh, let's see if we can get this kind of set on top, kind of get it lined up. And you'll probably have to use, grab one of your bolts and let's get it started through the housing and the gasket just to hold it in place. Cause this uh, gasket's gonna wanna slide on you. So I got it kind of through this front one here. And let's see if we can get this in place now. And at least get one of these started. It's kind of hard, but that gasket just wants to move on you. So if you can get it through and at least get it started in this bottom hole here. that bottom one started you can go ahead and move on to one of your other ones just make sure that gasket's lined up so you may have to move it to get it lined up there started and 
you can always grab your socket wrench and just try to tighten these up a little bit by hand here just to hold it in place a little better Try to get your other two in here. All right, so with all those started, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just kind of tighten those up, get them snug. Uh, if you guys wanna do torque on them, I think it's uh, 22 foot pounds. I'm just gonna kind of guesstimate on the torque because it's kind of hard to get a torque wrench down in there. So let's go ahead and uh, tighten those up. And then, of course, this last one here. And actually, I'll go ahead and hand tighten that if I can first. Okay, so like that, got all four of those tight. And then you go ahead and uh, get that little clip for your sensor back in there. I forgot to do that. So hopefully I can still do it here. That'll just snap in there. And I guess I should have did that before I put it back on there, but if this wire hangs down, it's not a big deal, so. It's kind of like that. Next, go ahead and grab your uh, sensor here. And go ahead and screw that in. Grab your 21 millimeter and let's go ahead and tighten that up. about right there it's kind of where it was and then go ahead and plug it in here and you can hear it snap and you know it's in place next let's go ahead and uh, get our oil filter up in there so i'll be using the uh, motorcraft 820-s got this off of amazon i'll put a link and then uh, also coated that with some fresh motor oil. So go ahead and stick this up in here.
and then just tighten this hand tight. Next, let's go ahead and uh, connect our lower radiator hose to the uh, filter housing there. So try not to get your, looks like this clip was trying to, our hose clamp was trying to come undone here. And of course that came off. Let's get that in place. You want to try to get these clips back to where they they were, um, so I don't have to regrip it and slide it on there a little more. Because if not, these like to leak if you don't get them in the same exact spot they were in. like it's about right there like that and then go ahead and grab your uh, air filter housing here get that pushed in through the side and you can see these two tabs just click into those rubber grommets down there filter put back in place here and then bring around and then bring around the rest of your housing here That's all locked into place. Grab your eight millimeter, tighten up your hose clamp. Okay, so now we can go ahead and start filling. Go ahead and pull your cap off here. And what I'll be using is the uh, Xerox Geo 5 this is the uh, gold stuff. This is what Ford recommends in these trucks. And as you can see, I'm using the concentrate. So this will make uh, four gallons if I mix it 50-50 with a uh, gallon of distilled water here. And I already checked and it looks like a little over two gallons came out from the original drain. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add uh, half of this gallon here and then I'll follow that by half a gallon of distilled water. And then I'll do it again. So go ahead and add about half a gallon of the concentrate. So right there, you can see that's about two quarts. So now I'll go ahead and add two quarts of the uh, distilled water here. So about like that. And then I'll go ahead and add the rest of this concentrate here, just to kind of mix it up a little. And then add the rest of this distilled water here. And 
And then you can see, so we are just above, it'll start to get some of the air bubbles out, but we're right above the cold level right there. So what you wanna do is uh, over here, your upper radiator hose, go ahead and start squeezing that. And then watch your level here, just to try to get some of these bubbles out of here. And you can see we're right at the top of the cold line there. But that'll probably go down once the thermostat opens up and the coolant starts flowing through the whole system. So we'll probably have to add some uh, tomorrow morning. But for now, that's good. So go ahead and get your funnel out of here. And you can go ahead and replace your cap if you want. Now we can go ahead and uh, fill the oil. Let's get you a funnel. And I'll be using uh, just the Motorcraft 5W20. And these trucks call for uh, right at six and a half. I've done an oil change on this truck so many times that it's exactly six and a half. So there's five quarts. And then we'll do one and a half quarts of this. So about right there. Go ahead and get your funnel out of here. Get your oil cap. So now we can go ahead and start it and then just pay attention to your oil pressure gauge there and make sure it gets up to normal pressure. You can see right there, we're at normal pressure. And then just crawl underneath here. Just double check, make sure uh, nothing's leaking around the housing there. That all looks good. And then you can go ahead and shut it off. And I'll let this sit for a minute and then we can uh, check that oil level. Okay, so I let that sit a few minutes here. So let's go ahead and uh, check our oil level here. So pull out your dipstick. Go ahead and wipe it off. Stick it back in there. And then as you can see, we are right at the full line, so exactly six and a half quarts. So we're good on that. And then double check your uh, coolant level. It's really hard to see probably on camera here because that gold stuff's almost clear. But we, uh, if I take this off, you can see, kind of hard to see, but we are right at Pretty much in between the full uh, cold line there, those two two lines there were in between those. So what I'm gonna do, since the truck is cold, I'm gonna go ahead and take this for a drive, uh, get it up to normal operating temperature. That way the thermostat opens up and uh, coolant starts flowing through the system. And then also turn on the heater so it starts flowing through the uh, heater core. And then I'll let it sit overnight and that level will probably drop just a little bit and then I'll need to top it off in the morning. So make sure you got enough coolant to top that off uh, the next morning. And then just double check again, make sure uh, nothing's leaking, no oil's leaking. And also check that uh, radiator hose that goes into the uh, oil filter housing as well. Make sure that ain't leaking. All right, so I just got back from a little bit of a drive here. You can see uh, my temperature is at normal now. Thermostat opened up. I got hot air flowing through the vents. So it's flowing through the heater core. So uh, I'll go ahead and uh, shut this off, let it sit overnight, and then uh, double check that level in the morning and add any coolant if I need to. All right, so that's gonna do it for the video. Again, this was a 2003 Ford F-150 with a 4.6 liter 
V8, and I went ahead and replaced the oil filter housing gasket, or they call it the oil filter adapter. Uh, had a pretty bad leak. Uh, I was leaving quite a few puddles overnight, so I went ahead and changed that out, and that seemed to take care of the issue. So hopefully this video helps you out. If it does, why don't you subscribe to my channel, check out some of my other videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.